Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. This story is sponsored by Morris Law, LLC. I always wanted to help people. I wanted to do something that would help folks make the choices that affected their everyday life. The main goal of Morris Law is to help people get their life back after an accident. Typically our clients are going through one of the worst times of their life. They've been injured through no fault of their own, through someone's negligence or carelessness. They're often hurting physically, hurting financially. Just because you hire a lawyer or just because you have health insurance doesn't mean that you won't get medical bills associated with your accident. Why do I owe $4,000 to the hospital when my health insurance should have paid? How does it work with the hospital and all of these injuries and how much time they have to spend in the hospital? You have to tell them that everything is going to be okay, regardless of what happens with this ambulance bill, regardless of what happens with this hospital bill. It's all going to work out. As an attorney, you're not going to let those medical providers take all of their settlement money. You negotiate that for them. You're still going to get money in your pocket for your injuries. After an accident, one of the biggest problems clients face is getting the health care they need. We want your entire focus to be on getting better. We want to take over not only the heavy lifting, but all the technical issues of trying to push your claims through. If it ends up in trial, making sure that all of that is taken care of so you can continue to focus on your treatment. We have attorneys that I knew for the whole time I've been practicing law. Ian was my first friend as an attorney when I started practicing. Lee and I went to law school together. We really are all friends outside of this practice. We meet with our clients together, we try cases together, and so we are a small knit group and we know our clients. I was test driving a car and I'm coming up to the light and there's a car coming across over to another road. She didn't see me, I didn't see her, and we kind of collided. I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't really do anything, bills was piling up. I didn't know what, what was going to happen. The girl of the car, she didn't have no insurance. She didn't have a license. I knew right away that I needed an attorney. The company that I was going to buy the car from, he referred me to Jeff. I called him and said, hey, I was in an accident. Can you help me out? He told me that I was in good hands. I wouldn't have to worry about anything and they kept in touch with me on everything. I never had to contact them, email them, call them, or anything. And I loved them for that day. I felt like they were my family when I went there. Like they really showed me love. What makes the Morris Law Firm unique is the collaboration that we have between our attorneys and our staff here. Jeff, Ian, and I are a team. We're bringing the big law firm feel to a small law firm. You know, some clients will go to other firms and they only talk to paralegals, they only talk to staff. They've never once talked to an attorney. Our policy is that you're going to talk to an attorney on day one. Morris, his background comes with a strong drive. He understands the medical part more than anybody at this firm. Besides the attorneys, our staff is key. We design our firm so that each of the staff member has the same experience as we do. At Morris Law, all three attorneys go on every file. Every attorney will be involved in your case, and if your case goes to trial, you will get every attorney in Morris Law at that trial. Here at Morris Law, we want to get you more. We want to get you more in terms of service. We want to get you more in terms of legal representation. We want to get you more in terms of your case value. At Morris Law, we can't undo what happened, but we can help you get past it. We are going to help you. This story is sponsored by Morris Law, LLC.
We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. This story is sponsored by the Ori Georgetown Home Builders Association. Thanks for joining us today on Living Local Carolina. I'm so excited to talk about a really exciting show that's coming up pretty soon. And I have Rob Clemens in here with me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And I'm super excited because home show is coming. So that's one of my favorite times of the year. I mean, 44th annual. It's, it's safe to say this is a pretty popular event. Oh, it's very popular. And I was looking at the home show guide leading up to it. And they have one of the original home show pictures. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to be blown away by how cool it is now because it went from just tables to huge displays and we're always raising the bar every single year yeah. so come on out and see it yeah awesome okay what should people expect well there are over 200 workshops out here exhibits i wow. should say and it's everything from outdoor living so you're talking about landscaping pools sunrooms which my company mm -hmm. does you go inside the house kitchen remodel bathroom remodeling hurricane storm protection love it energy efficiency just about everything you can think of so it's a really really great show just from purely meeting contractors and then there's also the workshops and all that other good stuff Who's the typical person that you see out there? Is it new home buyers or is it people that are looking to renovate? A little bit of both? It's a little bit of both. So, I mean, I can say that a lot of people who have been in their home for two or three years or more have looked at those things they want to do just to make it a little bit more enjoyable. So, Get the itch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then and we make it into a whole event, right? So there's there's workshops throughout the show. I'm doing one on Saturday. It's, mm -hmm. it's called How to Do a Remodel Properly. And um, so I'm going to tell people about how to find the right contract uh, there's also the pet. Uh, we have pets for adoption out there. Really? Helping the Grand Strand Humane Society. So, I mean, families can come out and have a, a good three days if they wanted to. I love it. So, it's going to be how many days and um, what are the hours? Yeah, so it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's the second, third, and fourth. Okay. Uh, 10 to 6 on Friday and Saturday, 11 to 5 on Sunday. Like I said, I think if you come out, you can really enjoy a number of different things each day. Like, we have a unique workshop every single day of the show so you it. know come on out and check it out it's only five dollars a ticket so it's a good time perfect where can people buy tickets uh, go to the Myrtle Beach Convention Center it is right there at the door you can also get them in advance but most people just buy them at the door um, and come on out and and make sure though to get to every booth if you can we look forward to seeing everybody Well, I'm back today at the Myrtle Beach Colored School Museum and Education Center, and I'm joined by Cookie. How are you, Cookie? I am well. How are you, Katie? I'm doing great. Yes. But tell me, where are we standing right now? So right now, we are standing in the um, Museum of African American History at the historic Myrtle Beach Colored School Museum and Education Center. Yes. So there's really several spaces, but um, the one is dedicated to the former students um, of the color school and then this is African American history where Doc She Moore serves as the uh, curator and it's, it talks about or shares um, our life, the life of African American um, people in Africa prior to enslavement and as, as dark you know as it was as mm -hmm. a part of history so we uh, share a little bit about uh, slavery itself and then some of the significant People, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, you know, all of those up into current day uh, with President um, Obama, Vice President Kamala Harris. So, talking a little bit about if people want to donate and help you guys out, how can they do that? Yes. So, um, we're continuously looking for um, artifacts as they relate to history. Mm -hmm. And so, um, donations can be made simply by calling us. Um, 843-918-1062 or showing up here um, at the museum and, and bringing those artifacts. Now, I will say that in order for something to be uh, deemed museum um, quality or museum eligible, there was um, a curator, you know, for the classroom part, that a professional person, mm -hmm. because, you know, some people brought their grandfather's shoes or their grandfather's hat. And while that is so important and so special, we did not have the space for it. Mm -hmm. So um, we just want people to, to um, come by and if they think they have something, but also for locals who have Mm -hmm. pictures um, from back in the day that you know they wish to share 
um, we're um, creating some things um, at Charlie's Place, which is one of the facilities um, that we manage and it's also mentioned here um, in the Museum of African American Histories. Well, thanks again for joining us today on Living Local Carolina. I'm joined in studio by Billy, who is from day one, week one. How are you doing, Billy? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. All right, let's get right into it. Okay. Tell me about your organization. So in June 9th of this year, 2023, um, I had a, an idea to start a nonprofit for first responders and veterans. Um, the suicide rate across our country is astronomical. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little bit of research and, and it's not hard to find over 200, excuse me, over 450 first responders uh, killed themselves last year in 2022. Uh, and that doesn't account for the 6,000 veterans that have killed themselves since the wars have started uh, in, 20, mm -hmm. in 2001. Um, there's a passion and a, and a heavy burden on my heart to stop my brothers and sisters from killing themselves. So I started the nonprofit, it's called Day One, Week One. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing is we're providing a platform for them uh, on our podcast to come and tell their stories. Uh, they talk about their traumatic experiences, how they got through those, what their support system looked like, mm -hmm. uh, the, the people that they've reached out to, and some of those people they didn't reach out to when they were in dark places. Uh, my personal story of two years ago, uh, I was in, a, in, a, in that, that frame of mind of suicide. Um, I'd gone through a, a kind of a, not a traumatic event, but a traumatic experience in my career. And uh, I felt like I had lost my identity. Mm -hmm. And uh, with losing that ad identity and losing the touch of the people in my support system, uh, I, I just, I didn't feel like there was another place to go. Thankfully, my wife, uh, being as incredible as she is, uh, reached out after I called her and told her that today's a bad day. Mm -hmm. uh, she reached out to a friend of ours who was an elder in our church. Within minutes, he arrived at my house. Uh, and he got out of the car and he gave, kind of gave me a little smirk. But he did something that literally changed my life. He put his hand on the back of my neck and he put his head to my head. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to let you do this today. We're, we're doing this together. So for every day that you need me here, I'm gonna be here. Mm -hmm. um, and it changed my life. The physical touch in that moment, uh, that's what we're missing. That's yeah. what we've lost over the years. Uh, so day one, week one wants to bring that back. Uh, my goal is to have a mental health triage group that mm -hmm. can self-deploy into these situations. I'm not talking about having them in a situation where uh, they're gonna put themselves in danger or anyone else. They're not, they're not gonna go to an active situation. It's gonna be someone that reaches out and says, hey, I need help. They're gonna deploy. They're gonna be, they're gonna go where they are. Mm -hmm. Unlike a 911 or a crisis center uh, where they would just talk to them on the phone and, and kind of consider their resources, they're, um, they're gonna deploy to where they are. Hey, let's go get a cup of coffee. Let's go get a sandwich. Let's talk about what's going on and then make that connection. And the triage part of it will be to uh, find out exactly what they need and get them the resources they, that they need from that. I love it. Okay. How can people listen to your podcast or learn more information? So all you got to do is go to dayoneweekone.org. Um, obviously, we're taking donations. Um, the big thing about the donations is we're obviously still building this organization. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, there's costs, startup costs, there's different things, uh, application fees, things like that, that, that go along with it. But um, eventually when all of those things are complete, the plan is that we're gonna start sponsoring first responders, uh, helping to pay for some of their medical bills, uh, their, their seeking mental health bills, uh, their counseling and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, the best way to reach out, you, you can go to any platform. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Truth Social, um, Getter, 
Um, we've just opened up, we've opened up all of the avenues so that you can't really miss us, hopefully, mm -hmm. out there. And um, we, we wanna make sure that everybody's understanding and, and knowing that day one, week one is here. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. How to use the QR code. Just open the camera app on your smartphone, iPad, or tablet. Point your device at the QR code so the QR code appears on your screen. Your device will recognize the QR code and show you a notification. Click that notification and you'll come to our website. Living Local Carolina, weekday mornings at 9.30 on WBTW News 13.